Today we're looking at consumer theory. We're looking specifically at individual demand. I'm going to use this infographic to briefly just summarize the most important aspects of what influences individual demand. So individual demand is basically constrained by your budget. So you have a budget and this budget then is used as a as a tool to determine the quantities that you can buy of certain goods and services. So two things can happen. The first that can happen is either the price of the goods can change. If the price of a good change, let's say you want to buy bread and the price of bread is half that of what it was yesterday, you can buy more bread. Or if it's more expensive today than it was yesterday, you can buy less bread with your income. Or the other aspect, or the other possibility is your income can change. So let's say your income increased this month compared to the previous month. Now it enables you to go and buy more goods and services. If it's less, then you will buy less. Most probably you'll buy less. Okay, so let's have a detailed look into, into these, or a little bit more into uh, focus on, on what's the implication. So let's first start with income change. So if your income change from, let's say, the first blue line, which is your budget line, it increases from there to the second one, there's a possibility that you can now use or buy more of both goods. And if it increases even more, you can buy even more of both goods. So what happens now is you can actually see that over the long term where the, where the utility maximization points are for each of the budget lines, we can have an income, income consumption curve. So the income consumption curve shows us a point where we maximize our profit, or sorry, our utility. And at that point, we also use a combination of the two goods that we're looking at. Important is the shape of the income consumption curve tells us something about the good that we are buying. So first of all, let's say if your income increase from there to there to there, but your consumption in food decrease as your income increase. So that means this line is not straight, but it actually goes backward. That means it's an inferior good. It's an inferior good. The more, the higher your income, the less you use of it, it's then an inferior good. But the other way around is if it if it looks like this and you buy more of the good as your income increase, it's then a normal good. So the more income you have, the more you buy of it. We, we call that an in, a normal good. We can also show this principle using an Engel curve. So an Engel curve gives us uh, shows or illustrates the income versus the quantity of the specific good you are buying. So let's, for example, look at hamburgers. So hamburgers is a normal good as your income increase from 10 to 20. So you use more hamburgers, you buy more hamburgers, you want more hamburgers. But then at a certain point in time, when your income increase from 20 to 30, so from there to there, then we start to use less hamburgers. Let's say you then substitute your hamburgers for something else. Let's say a wrap or a salad. That means your hamburger now becomes an inferior good. So you, as your income increase, you use less of that. Okay, so that's the first one, income change. If the price of the good change, so you go to the shop, you want to buy milk, you get to the store, you get to the fridge, you open it, you see prices on special today. You can buy more milk than you wanted to buy, than you planned to buy. So what happens now is the change of the price of the unit also affects your ratio of the number of goods that you're going to buy. Let's say clothing and this could be food or this could be milk. So if your milk price decrease, then we can buy more milk. So we look at that budget line, the, the one at the, the furthest away. So you can now buy a lot more milk with the same money. If, if milk becomes more expensive, you can then buy less milk. So we adjust the price of the milk, or the food in this case, by changing the slope of the budget line. So you can see clothes, there's, there's no change in, in the intercept of clothes because the price, the maximum number of clothes that you can buy stays the same. But the number of milk or food you can buy changes as its price change. So if this price change, uh, it can tell us something about the good. So the change in your usage of that good tells us something about the good. Let's look at two examples. 
first you start at point a that means you're going to the shop this is the quantity that you want to buy of milk but then you see oh wait the price of milk is lower so eventually when you walk out of the store you are actually at point b so what happened the first move that you make is on your indifference curve from point A to point D. We call that the substitution effect. Then the last move that we do on this curve, just to illustrate the impact, is a movement from D to B. And that is our income effect. So what is the income effect? Income effect shows you that you have more buying power as a result of the lower price of the milk, or in this case the food. So because the effect from D to B is positive, so it's an increase in the quantity of food, or milk in this case, it is a normal good. So as your income increase, your buying power increase, you use or you buy more milk. So that means it's a positive increase. So it's, this is a normal good. But we also then get a possibility that can, can be an inferior good. So again, we, we you're going to the shop, you're at point A. When you leave the shop, you are eventually, and you end up at point B. So what happened? So the first movement is on an existing indifference curve, and this shows you your substitution effect. So it's from A to D. And then your income effect is the movement from D to B, your final destination, if I can call it like that. And you can see this is a negative movement. So it means that after your buying power, you've considered that, you actually spend less or you buy less of this good so that's a negative income effect so this negative income effect shows you that this is an inferior good so the normal good the income effect will be positive an inferior good oh sorry that should be an inferior good the income effect will be negative slightly negative okay so this is just a short summary of uh, the Consumer theory, specifically looking at individual demand. I try to keep it short and sweet. I hope that you understand. Cheers.